Good morning and welcome to Ag Talking to Raw, where I talk raw about agriculture and other things that are on my mind. I'm sitting here in my underwear because I'm too lazy to put my pants on. Now get that image out of your head. Anyway, uh, yeah, so what's going on in agriculture today in New Jersey? Uh, well, it's pretty simple. It rained yesterday. It rained pretty intent, intense rain we had a lot of rain uh i don't know how much but the water was running and it was just miserable so i went home i just went home uh sat down watched a few movies because it was just a thing to do on a rainy miserable day uh let's see i watched ant-man ant-man and the wasp i watched oh identity theft identity thief it was freaking funny uh, so anyway, <coughs> that's what's going on in the first minute of this uh, this uh, broadcast, as you would say, possibly a podcast, but it's not a podcast because I never have any guests. My wife is in there, but she never participates. She just hates being on camera. But anyway, so today's uh, today what we are going to be doing at the farm is setting up to fill the bin uh, with corn. I have to get I got to get going. I see there's a lot of people that are finishing up and I'm struggling to get started, um, which is good though, because my corn just isn't quite dry enough. Um, and of course, with a day of rain, I got two days of, uh, I'll have two days of, uh, of drying in order to get that stuff back down to, you know, the 16, 17% that I would like it to be in. Uh, but we're getting there. We're getting there. So I got to set up three augers today, and I also have to set up uh, electricity to the. Uh, I just have to hook them up. Uh, the, the the I bought new wire. I'm not changing anything that was already there, other than I'm ripping out the old wire and putting new wire in. So I don't think I'm going to have any issues with that. Uh, the wire that I purchased is actually. Uh, outdoor wire so I imagine you know I bought conduit but uh, I don't know that I'm going to be using the conduit I might just direct bury it like it you know it was designed to be uh, used for so and it is it's direct bury and it is also a UV protected uh, coating on the outside so I'll be okay with that I would like to put it into a conduit though because there's just there's just a few things that need to be you know, protected and uh, on the outside. When it comes up through the ground, I could run it that way, but I don't know. So, but anyway, I do have to run it up the bin to the new motor that's up top. I have to run it to the new to the old motor that runs out the exit side of it, uh, the the unloading auger and the two new fans or the one new fan and the existing fan that I have there. They are on separate boxes, so there's fan one and fan two, which they both have to be on in order to uh, work. I was thinking about putting light bulbs on, but I didn't really want to do that just because it's more electric to burn. You know, like, oh, yeah, this is on. You might want to shut that off. Uh, <laughs> that kind of a thing. Uh, not that it would even make any difference, but, uh, yeah. So, yeah, so anyway, the combine is uh, ready to rock and roll. Uh, I think there's a... A little bit of an adjustment that I will have to make to it. I want to close the, the stripper plates up a little bit. And there's a an electric motor uh, on the uh, TR-96 that speeds up and slows down my feeder house. And I think my feeder house is on slow. And it needs to be sped up uh, for two reasons. It needs to be sped up because I have extraordinarily long stalks. And uh, in order for that feeder house to be... Uh, for those stalks to get shucked all the way down to get the ear off before it gets to the back of the, uh, the back of the header, it needs to be going as fast as possible, and it also needs to have those plates closed down. I have them at an what did I have an inch and a quarter, or an inch and an eighth, to an inch and three eighths. I think I'm going to close it down to right around an inch or less uh, for for this this deal because it just seems like it needs to be closed down a little bit more. There's some. There's some, uh, uh, it's not making, it's not shucking it all the way down. Plus the stalks are drying out pretty good now, so it really won't matter too much. But I don't want all that stalk material going through the combine because it's carrying the grain out 
through the feeder beater, uh, or not the feed, the dis discharge beater. It's not cleaning out in the rotors uh, all the way. And I know as the, the stalks get drier, then it will, that problem will disappear, but still, uh, it would just be better if I, uh, if I had that thing going as fast as possible. And I know that's just an electric motor uh, that is causing a problem. So I'm going to pull that off of there probably possibly today or tomorrow, and uh, we'll get on to that. Uh, as far as the grain markets are concerned, uh, corn is coming up just slightly every more every week, you know. So uh, when it does top out, I think I'm just going to sell 10,000 bushels then. And, uh, you know, hopefully that goes that goes well. Uh, if I sell 10,000 or 15,000 bushels, then, you know, boom, it'll go out the door and I'll be okay with that. Uh, you know, that wouldn't be bad, right? I mean, 15, man, what the hell, making a cool 20, right? Um, I have it. I mean, the corn is out there. Obviously, it's in the field. It's not in the bin. But when it gets in the bin, when we start filling that bin, it's going to go pretty quickly um, just because... I think we're prepared. I really do. The hardest part is going to be going the distance, going all the way to the other farm with these uh, carts and, and truck. And, you know, there's three, eh, four, eight, 1,200 bushels worth. of, And it doesn't sound like enough. I mean, I need semis to really do this correctly, but I just don't have that luxury right now. So uh, if, if the corn gets down around 16, 17%, it'll fly through that dryer and... Uh, you know, it won't take us long at all. It'll be going in as fast as it comes out, and 30 mile an hour tractors will get the uh, get the uh, corn home, and uh, you know, at a decent pace. And hopefully, we can just keep it going. I have two guys on carts and uh, two guys feeding that dryer, and one running that combine. And hopefully, we can stay ahead. Uh, if not, I'm gonna have to purchase another wagon or find one that I can borrow or something. I hate borrowing wagons and stuff but if i can purchase a gravity flow box it's you know 400 bushel uh and don't tell me i need a grain cart because i really don't need a grain cart uh i just need because i don't have semis you know that that's the whole purpose of the grain cart is to take the corn right from the combine put it into a semi so that it can go out uh, you very rarely see anybody taking a grain cart. Nobody takes a grain 1100 bushel grain cart down the road to unload into a dryer. That just isn't the way it works. And the tractors are big enough to pull the pull the the gravity flow boxes through the uh, through the field to where I'm working uh, to you know to, so that I'm not stopping. But I think I need another one. I, I just got this terrible feeling that I'm I'm short. You know I'm short one. And uh, I really need to do something about that. So uh, maybe I'll look online. There might be something close for a couple thousand bucks that I can grab. Uh, and that would probably work out okay. Uh, but yeah, so corn harvest is about to get into full swing. And I've got two of these, three of these GoPros all charged up and ready to go. Uh, I've got these little suction cup gizmos. And... Uh, I'm hoping that I can get some better angles and some different different angles and stuff that I can just, you know, put one on a tractor, put one, you know, put, I got four of them, so I might as well utilize the damn things. And uh, we'll see where it goes from there. And uh, I'm just hoping that everybody is, you know, is as excited as I am about the, the corn harvest. And then from there, we go to shredding, baling, stacking, covering, uh, and hopefully moving material. Um, there's, the, I have pretty much sold the corn fodder. I have sold the corn fodder. They, I just have to, I got to get it covered and baled dry, you know, and they're going to be wanting that pretty soon, uh, for winter, you know, they'll stock up their material and, and they can, I mean, I don't give a damn which way, where it goes or how it goes out of here, as long as it goes. And it's close enough to them. Uh, they were running all the way down to the Eastern shore to haul it all the way up to New York state, which is four hours farther from me and four hours in one direction, you know, four hours. So there's eight hours, you know, I got to go down. It's two hours to their shop from here. So there's 12 hours. If they leave their shop and go all the way to the Eastern shore of Maryland, and that's just the upper end of it. That's like Snow Hill area. So you've got eight hours, boom, boom, to go up and down or down and up. And then from there to go to, uh, 
go out to western New York, you're looking at another seven, eight, nine hours. So you're looking at a 16 hour jaunt to go down and pick that up. Or you just come down to my place here and uh, save yourself uh, for eight hours. Uh, and you can do that running a day. So they come down, I load it, or they load it, I don't care who loads it, and then boom, up to New York it goes. They drop it off there and make their loop back. So that, that wouldn't be terrible. That wouldn't be terrible at all. So I'm pretty happy that that's going to go the way that's going. I do have to run to New York and get to, uh, uh, I have to run to New York with the shredder, a shredder, a baler, and a stack wagon when they get their corn off. Uh, probably, you know, as soon as I'm done with mine, I'm going to attack theirs. So, and the reason I'm doing that is because they asked me to do it. And of course, I'm getting paid, but you know, it's like just one hand washes the other kind of a thing. Like, hey, we'll we'll buy your fodder, but we really need somebody to bail our fodder, and it's a hundred miles away, so we'll just drive the shit up there and 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 do what we do uh, for that. Uh, did sell a load, one load of corn went out here last week. Yeah, there was, it was this week. Yeah, I think it was on Wednesday. It went out, and I wasn't really happy with the way it came out of that conical bin. And I put that damn corn in that conical bin at like 14% moisture, and I felt some heat coming down from the top. So yeah, that conical bin has always been a nightmare. It, it just pulls moisture. I don't know how or why, but it just pulls moisture, and there's no airflow on it. So. I'm thinking of getting one of those, well, I have one of the fans, you know, the, and I can stick it over the top. There's a vent hole there. The problem is I don't have it. I'm unable to seal it. I have no rubber to seal it with that I know of. I could probably find a big old roll of foam or something and lay on the top there and uh, or rubber, r roll out a rubber seal. I think I can get some of that stuff like two inch wide rubber it's maybe a half inch thick that the the steel can lay on top of and it'll pull it you know pull it down as a seal and then pull the moisture up through that corn or air up through that corn and it might work you know it may work hopefully it would work i don't need any rotten corn out of that thing so today i'm going to get the auger set up and i'm going to recycle it through the uh through the dryer uh that's what i'm going to do i'm going to recycle it through the dryer and put it up into the into the big bin that just got repaired uh yep and hopefully we get some sunshine and i can start to pick some of this drier corn and just send it through uh, at least that's that's the plan i'm going to quick wire those things up today um grant will be coming uh after no grant's going to be coming this morning so we'll give him a shovel and uh, i'll run those four leads of wire out i have 500 feet of it I hope I have enough. I'm just really hoping I have enough. Now the wire that goes up the side of the bin, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. So my uh, my hopes and dreams are that this <laughs> that this uh, the wire that's good to the top of the bin, I can just splice in and uh, use that. There's nothing wrong with it, so I don't see why copper doesn't go bad unless it's been hot, and uh, this hasn't been hot. Uh, so anyways, I guess that's that's pretty much the gist of of what we're doing. Um, got a, you know, on on this farm here now farming in general out in the uh, rest of the country uh, from what I've seen is well underway. I see how farms work is into their soybeans pretty good and millennial farmer. I believe he finished his beans and he's running corn all over hell uh, over the top of that X9 John Deere combine. And, uh, you know, Jeff Ramon, he's in his last, uh, his last hoorah. Uh, there's a few others that I do watch and, you know, they're just, uh, Tara, you know, out at the Beaver Vineyard, she's doing her thing. Um, I see that the WT Farm Girl, she is finishing up her hay and, uh, you know, she posted that I had helped her out with her baler and, uh, you know, I try. Uh, if somebody calls me with a legitimate question, you know, and is legitimately stumped, I, I, my brain does know how these knotters work and I can generally diagnose pretty quickly what your problem is because I've had the problem. If you've done as many acres and bales as I have, in my life uh, and you don't know how a knotter works and what the symptoms are and the problems are then pretty much you've been paying too much to your dealer to fix your issues 
Um, I've probably bailed more big bales than a lot of people do in little bales in their lifetime. Over the last 21 years of bailing big bales, uh, I've bailed phew, hundreds of thousands of these things. Uh, little bales, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of bales of those things. And uh, I dislike the little ones um, just because they're time consuming. Now I know there's equipment that I could, I could purchase and make the little bale program a lot more let's say, uh, speedy and effortless. Um, the, the main thing would be a bale baron. Uh, if I was going to buy anything for little bales, it would be a bale baron. My problem is that it just takes so much longer to deal with little bales, and uh, dealing with people is, ju is just crappy. Um, I guess I could probably hook up with uh, the broker that is buying the... Uh, the corn fodder and then you know say hey here I've got bale barren bales of Timothy orchard grass or you know alfalfa if I decide to grow alfalfa at some point in my life which I'm not sure that I would alfalfa is a very intense crop uh, it takes a lot of fertilizer a lot of care and when you're running big bales of mulch hay you just don't have the time to care um, so but that's just that's just the way it works Oh, anyway, so we've been yammering on for about 16 minutes here, and uh, I think that's just about it. Uh, you know, we our pricing here is in the four, 440 range, 430, 440 range right now. Uh, delivered, picked up, it's in that 410, you know, 405, 410, 415, uh, something like that. It, I have to call again and sell. Once I start filling that bin, I'm going to call and I'm going to sell five loads right off the bat. Uh, just to keep the center of the bin clean. You know, I don't have a spreader up there, so the chaff will have a tendency to land in the middle. And I just don't, I don't trust it. Uh, the chaff, the, you know, the fines, I could run it through the screen. I do have a screen cleaner, uh, but I don't have hogs or cattle right now. I should just buy some cattle, and then I could just screen it out and make feed out of it and then feed it to the, to the cows, the beef cows, and grow beef, you know. I could do that. Uh, I do have a, a friend that wants to sell some cows, and he doesn't. You know, I should just buy them, Mr. Dale Walker. I need to buy four cows, so I'll probably call you today on that because I got to get over to your place. I got to pick up the bales that I dropped, you know, that I dropped on your farm, and get those picked up and moved off to a place, a manageable place. But uh, anyway, yeah. So thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. I think, maybe, I think.